Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 584. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why some women lack financial confidence. And this is from a new survey that was just done that I want to share with you that has shocking results. But before I do that, I want to remind you today is the big day. It's the day that I'm going to announce all of the contest winners. So stay tuned to see if you've won a wealth mentoring session with me, a wealth heiress book signed by me, or my wealthy mindset blueprint audio sets. I'll be announcing the winners at the end, and your names are also in the show notes, so you can check there too. This study was actually done by Allianz. It's called the Allianz Life, Women, Money, and Power Study, and was commissioned by Allianz Life Insurance Company of North America in April of 2019 with a sample of 900 women ages 25 to 75 with household income of $30,000 a year or higher. So that's who the survey was of. Now let's find out what it says. And this article comes to us from U.S. News and World Report and was written by Kelly Levin. There is no doubt that women today are leading the way in many aspects of life. The majority of college graduates are women and more women are going on to earn doctoral degrees. Women are making up larger percentages of key business and government leadership and conversations about female equality and empowerment remain top of mind for many. Yet when it comes to investments and finances, recent data is painting a surprising, less than positive picture. Counter to what one would think, women are actually losing ground. According to the 2019 Women, Money, and Power study from Allianz Life Insurance Company of North America, women are experiencing a downward trend in several areas of their financial lives with over half, 57%, saying they wish they were more confident in their decision-making. The biggest drop was in the number of women who say they are the breadwinner in their household, just 38% in 2019, down from 47% in 2016, and 60% in 2013. In addition, fewer women say they have more earning power than ever before, 42% in 2019 compared with 50% in 2016, and 57% in 2013. And fewer women say they are the CFO of their household, 47% in 2019 compared with 51% in 2016 and 53% in 2013. This downward trend is a bit puzzling, especially when you put it in the context of women's rising social power. And while everyone's financial situation is unique, there are a few overall trends that may shed some light on why women aren't feeling financially empowered and why more than half, 57%, say they wish they were more confident in their financial decision-making. The past year and a half has seen ongoing market volatility that may be concerning to some women or anyone for that matter. The study found that women are feeling pessimistic about current market conditions, and 44% admit they are feeling anxious about the volatility in the market. Further, only 36% are ready to invest now based on current market conditions. Watching your investments take major hits repeatedly isn't likely to make anyone feel particularly good about their financial situations. While it's not always fun, The age-old advice remains in times of volatility, leave investments where they are and write it out. Another interesting finding is that fewer women report working with a financial professional. Only 25% of women say they currently have one, down from 30% in 2016. Even among those that are working with a financial professional, they are less likely to say they feel confident and prepared for their financial future. One potential reason is that they are feeling left out of financial planning conversations. Of married-slash-partnered women that are working with a financial professional, 
an increasing number say their financial professional treats their spouse slash partner as the decision maker 60% in 2019 compared with 51% in 2016. Also, fewer single women who are currently working with a financial professional report that that person is their go-to source for information. This could be tied to the fact that single women are most likely to say they actively use financial technology, such as tools and calculators, to help with managing finances or investments when compared with married, partnered, divorced, or widowed women. No matter your marital status, it's important to find a financial professional that understands your unique position and the financial planning and investment needs of women today. Despite the drop in confidence and other key measures, more women say they are taking on at least some responsibility for managing their household's long-term savings and investments, 90% in 2019 versus 86% in 2016. With this increased responsibility, more women say they are setting financial goals for themselves but have a hard time following through, 28% versus 22%. Fewer also report being good at saving for short-term goals, 68% versus 75%, or long-term goals, 53% versus 66%. Setting and achieving goals, no matter how small, can be a good way to start to build that confidence up and get women on their way to financial empowerment. As women continue their upward climb towards equality and empowerment across all aspects of their lives, finances should be a center point of the conversation. Learning more about money in whatever way works best for you is a great place to start. Find technology and apps that help you build your foundation and help you tune into your personal financial and investment strategy. Another important aspect is talking about finances. In some cases, people may feel it's a taboo subject, but talking about finances shouldn't be scary whether it's with friends, family, or your partner or spouse. Of course, key to this is talking with a financial professional who understands your family dynamics and your specific needs and wants when it comes to money. Building financial confidence takes time and it's certainly not easy. The first step is raising awareness of the issue and then fighting the right resources and support to put women on the path back toward financial confidence. End of article. All right, I have so much to say on this, but I've said it recently in some of my podcasts on women. First of all, 61% of women would rather talk about their own death than talk about money. So right there, we have an issue with not wanting to have a conversation about it. So just telling someone to go have a conversation isn't going to make you feel comfortable. Rather, I think we need to address some of the issues why women feel so uncomfortable talking about money and why they don't feel they have financial confidence. A lot of that just goes back to education. Because we aren't educated about finances in school, it's very difficult for women to feel confident. Studies have shown that women don't just jump to the next level without really understanding a concept. They want to really understand something and feel they know it, and then they will say, yes, I understand it. They're not one to reach and say they understand something I'm talking about more in a work context, but the studies showed that when women were asked about promotion, they didn't feel that they could apply for the promotion until they knew all of the job requirements that the promotion required. Whereas men were more willing to apply for a job promotion even if they didn't have all of the qualifications. It's just a difference between men and women. And it comes back to, women valuing security a bit more and men being a little bit more comfortable with risk-taking. I've seen that. That's a broad generalization. It's not true for everyone. But a lot of times, women do tend to like security more and be less comfortable with risk-taking. And add that to the fact that there is an education on finance or investing in schools, and you've got a formula for women just not being comfortable to talk about it. I've also heard a very common complaint for women who work with financial advisors, and that is that their questions aren't answered or they feel that they are treated as if the questions are stupid or they're put down or they're just ignored and not listened to, even if they're the major breadwinner. So we also have a situation where women aren't comfortable with a financial advisor, aren't feeling listened to, 
valued, empowered by a financial advisor, and certainly aren't getting the financial education that they need. And personally, I don't think an app is the answer to that. If it were, I would have created an app for you already, and you know that. I think the answer is education about how markets work, how to invest, what's going on, and make it not intimidating because goodness knows women already have enough on their plates. I think women who are becoming empty nesters are finally feeling like they have enough time to maybe take on the financial education aspect in their family and learn more about it and become more of a 50-50 partner in the household about it if they're not already the lead CFO of the family. Because women are understanding more and more that they're likely to be the one that outlives their partner. And as such, they need to have that financial education and understanding and not put that off to learn sometime in the future. So I'm glad that you're here with me today so that in 15 minute little mini lessons, you can learn financial things and you can put them into practice and you can gain financial power and confidence from that. And of course, men can too. But I think sometimes there is more of a natural inclination for men to want to understand financial matters and have an interest in financial matters. Sometimes women are too busy. Sometimes they're focused on the family. Sometimes there just is a lack of interest. And sometimes women are fantastic at it. When they do turn their focus and their interest on it, they usually excel. As we have seen, female investor groups have actually outperformed male investor groups, mainly because they are more long-term focused and will hold on to an investment for a longer period of time And since markets that go up, bull markets, are about 80% of the time, that will work to a woman's favor to be a long-term holder of an investment. But here's the thing. I'm all for financial empowerment, whether you're a woman or a man. It doesn't matter to me. But I do think that the women need a little bit more support and maybe a little more help getting interested, perhaps, perhaps for some. And hopefully that's what I do well here for you on this podcast. Nonetheless, it was very concerning to see women falling backwards in this study. And although it wasn't a huge censorship sample, it was only 900 women. And I think there can be some bias because it's not a larger sample size. I do think it's concerning to see trends moving in the wrong direction. And we definitely want to correct that. So you're in the right place to turn that number around. And another thing that's going to help you turn that around is if you're a winner of one of my contest prizes. So let's talk about that. We have the Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197. These are audios that really help you get your wealthy mindset moving in the right direction, setting some priorities, getting those limiting beliefs out and mindset blocks removed. Our five winners are Ames, A-M-E-S. Number two is Paula, Beyond Frustrated. Number three is Indigo's Star. Number four is With Ben's Eyes. And number five is Bugged Out. You've all won a Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio set. If you're a winner, just send an email to me at lpjhome at gmail.com, put winner in the subject line, and I'll get your audios emailed right over to you. Now, we have five winners of You're Already a Wealth Therapist, Now Think and Act Like One, Six Practical Steps to Make It a Reality Now, my book, which was added to the list of all-time wealth books by Book Authority. The winners are Al, and Al also put A-L and then in parentheses E and said new listener. Number two, L Zenner, Z-E-N-N-E-R. Number three, Hooked. Number four, Bits and Giggles. Number five, C. Nunez, 13. So your names are all printed in the show notes in case you need to look again and see if that's you. But if it is, send me an email, please, with winner in the subject line and let me know how you'd like me to sign my book to you. Whether you want me to sign your name, I usually have a little phrase that I put, but if you'd like your name added or you'd like a different phrase, email that over to me at lpjhome at gmail.com. And finally, we have two winners of one-on-one wealth mentoring sessions with me valued at $500. 
Number one is Ann Schaefer. And number two is CSG1271. You've both won a one-on-one -on -one wealth mentoring session with me. Send me an email, put winner in the subject line, and we'll get our dates scheduled for us to talk. Again, all of the winners are mentioned in the show notes, so you can check that out and see if you are one of them. And thank you to everyone who left a podcast review or book review. You guys wrote the most amazing things, and I can't even tell you how much it means to me. Because most of podcasting is a one-way street where I'm talking to you, and I love hearing back from you what you think and how much you're getting out of the podcast and how you're putting it into practice and how it is getting you interested in finances in a way that you haven't been in the past, or it is getting you to implement things that you didn't think you could do, or it is getting you to open your mind and think differently about investing, especially with my book and people saying that they're using it as a guide and underlining it and highlighting it and carrying it with them and referring back to it in the checklist. These are things that are all so amazing because that's my role is to help you make progress, to help empower you, to help you have financial success. And if you're ready to do that in a bigger way, this week is the last time I'm going to have the special offer to join the VIP experience at a very special price and 50% discount. If you wanna to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about whether it's a good fit for you or not, just fill out the survey in the show notes and we'll get an appointment set up. No obligation, no pressure. But if it's right for you and you're ready to do some additional learning on investing and really get your plan together, really get tuned into a program that is going to get you in tune with what's going on with the markets, what's going on with investing, and improve that financial confidence, I think the VIP experience is perfect for you, whether you're a woman or a man, whether you have much investment experience or not. We have a really awesome group that I think you would benefit being a part of. And this is the perfect time to join because the price is going to be going up in a major way because of all of the new things I'm adding into the program. So if you're serious about it, this is going to be the last time you can access the lower price. Fill out the little short questionnaire and we'll get a time to talk. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.